Hello, in this video tutorial, I want to show off how to use Google Drive to share files with other people and how to use its folder system as well as a few uh, key parts of Google Docs that will be really helpful to know for anyone trying to use it and use it with other people. I'm making this especially for my group member Sally in my CMSC 495 class because she's uh, involved with our documentation and like to make sure she has all the best on the best tools and knows how to use them so let's get started shall we first I'd like to show off this menu that I'm in I'm in a folder in my Google Drive and if I go up here I can share this folder with other people I can uh choose what they can do i can get shareable links to send people but it's better if you use email addresses and it'll show everyone that i have shared it with and any of the permissions that i uh assigned to this folder will be automatically assigned to any files that are put into this folder so if i say these three people that i share this folder with can sh um access view and mess with information and upload their own stuff and that means every single file and folder shares those same permissions now you can also upload um if you right click here you can upload your own files it's important to note that if you're just in your drive or if you're like uh anywhere let me just click back real quick if you click a new um Google Docs, it won't create it in this folder. What you need to do is right click with your mouse and then click Google Docs. And since I right clicked in the area that is this folder, it'll create a Google Doc and it'll be like creating a shared folder. And I'll click yes. Now I'm gonna go over here real quick and delete my old test plan. That file will still technically be accessible by collaborators, it says. I haven't done enough collaborating to confirm like how true that is. I'm going to create a test plan. So I'm just going to go with a test plan CMSC 495. And that's the name of the file. I don't have to worry about uh, messing with the share permissions for this because it's already in already in this folder see the files already popped up tada if i click on one of these i can go into this folder right i could show it in any one of these i create a new folder and it'll be in here it's wonderful works pretty well there is one issue i've noticed that if you try to upload a word document um first off it doesn't like to deal with all the formatting that a word document does and second whenever you try to open it it doesn't actually open the word document itself it creates a google doc of that and it does this repeatedly so you end up with multiple same looking files and it gets really confusing especially just trying to collaborate on one of them with other people so i would recommend against trying to uh do that too much and instead just create Google Docs and then when you need to create a Word document version do that for your final little touches and just download it and work on it that way now moving on to Google Docs I'm gonna show off some key features first I'm just gonna type in a few things I'm gonna say title is test plan and I'm gonna say group Alpha, that's the name of our group in the class. And then I'm going to uh, take this and click over here. We're going to adjust styles. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to say title. Bam. And then here, actually, I'll create one more little line and say, I'm just going to say, um, this is our test plan document. I wonder how well we'll hear that in the mic. <laughs> now I'm going to click here and click subtitle. Now what will happen is this is created as a different kind of uh, text than this. It's basically stylized this and it's really useful. I'm sure uh, Sally 
will already know how styles work. I've seen her uh, seen her formatting work before, so she's familiar with it. But I want to point it out for other people how styles work, and then I'll break down how you adjust them in here. So we have styles that adjust the text. Oops, I accidentally moved it. I'll press Control Z. Now, if you wanna, if you don't like this, you can uh, change the font actually. So I'll just change the font here. I'm gonna say Phoenix. Oh yeah, Phoenix. Incorrectly spelled word, but whatever, we'll roll with it. Now, since I've done that, I can also set this to here. And, um, set it to, I'm going to say bold. I won't put it bold because I don't feel like it. But I'll click title. I'll click here and I'll click update title to match. Now, what this does is... It sets the default formatting for the title uh, style to whatever the highlighted text I picked was. So if I clicked this, for example, and I said update title to match, see how it immediately adjusted that uh, text that was like that? I'm going to go ahead and undo that change real quick. Just for, you know, our purposes. Now, if I would like to um, adjust line spacing, this is really, really important. You can kick, uh, click custom spacing as yeah, before and after. I'm going to say for title, I'm just going to say four. Why not? I'm just going to get just trying to get a little creative with it right now. Now, this is the subtitle. And mm, your thoughts on how to use a subtitle, it's ultimately up to you. I decide I don't like that to be so large. I'm going to click custom spacing. I'm going to click zero. Since it already has line spacing, like naturally, it'll create a, it'll still have that nice little gap there. Now it's important to make sure I highlight that real quick. Click title, update title to match, and it'll save everything, including whatever font you picked. If I click here, click subtitle, Update subtitle to match. Ta-da. And this is just normal text. And I can adjust and change that as necessary. It's important to note there's a difference between line spacing and the uh, paragraph spacing. Paragraph spacing, whenever you press enter, it will uh, create a space. Whereas if you're just typing out text and it moves to the next line automatically, it'll be adjusted instead by line spacing. So now that I have this, I can... Click here. I'm going to go to page setup real quick, and I'm going to adjust the margins a bit. I typically like my uh, typically like my margins a bit wider. So I'm going to go with my left. I'm going to go with 0.7 because I like my stuff to be a little little wider. Top, I'll go 0.7, and the bottom, I'll go with 0.5 to make it extra low because we have all this white space we're not using. This is obviously not going to fit for anyone who's trying to do APA format, but you can adjust it later. Ooh, another option to point out real quick. How to make, you can make a different first page header footer. And the header footer is a separate entity. I hope everyone understands how that works. But if I want to insert a um, page number, I would have to go to here, click insert, and then go to page number. And if you notice the different styles here, it has a, Four different styles you can pick from for automatic page numbers. You have essentially the normal, and you have title page where it's expecting a title page. I'm going to click that just to show it off. And you won't see it because we only have one page, and that's the title page. So I'm going to click here and click page break. And hmm, it's interesting that it's not showing up right now. Probably wasn't showing up because I didn't have a... Uh, there we go. That explains why. So it's all, it's going to automatically assume a different uh, header and footer. And this is considered normal text style. So whatever I do to normal text will uh, update and reflect here. So I'm going to create just a little uh, oh, introduction text. And then I'm going to say, hmm, what else would I want to fit my test plan off the top of my head? I'm going to say... Uh, you know, list of variables, text, introduction. I would also like to have a subheader saying um, brief 
project uh, description text just to make sure to reiterate what our project is known as to go fishing and hunting for it. I'm going to click here. I'm going to make this heading one. I'm going to click here, make this heading two. And you can be heading one again. Now, it'll only show these three headings, but if you make a heading three, a heading four will automatically pop up. I think, I don't know if you can go beyond 10 different heading styles. So it's up to you. Now, if I want to adjust these, I can always adjust them, of course, just like I demonstrated previously. You can adjust indenting. Um, here's an interesting thought. If I want to add a link to something, let's say I'm just going to say, uh, like talking about Java is a, uh, you know, upper level language. If I want to specify well, what that is by having a link to it, I can just say, uh, I can highlight this right here and click this little button up here to insert a link. I could, you know, link to different headings. It comes up with its own list of articles and whatnot and you can also link to other documents if you want to just let them uh do that which pretty useful but i can insert a link here i'll just say uh you know i'll just click that it doesn't really matter i'll it'll work i'll click that and ta -da, opens up a new Opens up right to the link you suggested. Now, if I wanted to uh, insert a table of contents, for example, if I want to click here and say insert um, page break, you can do an automatic. I wouldn't put too much stock in their automatic one just because it doesn't, you know, their styles don't look very good. And I haven't experimented with it much. And most of the time I'm, I, that I need a table of contents, it's, I'm just going to automatically create it in Word because it's for a school project. Give me one second here to take a drink. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm trying to do this in one take. A little challenging, but I'm going to create a you know, table of, of contents. I'll do a manual one for the purposes here just to demonstrate. One, uh, one aspect you can do is table of context, uh, context, not context, table of contents. I'm going to say, uh, right, I'm going to look at my headings real quick. Introduction, list of variables, introduction. Oh, here, I'll real quick, I'm going to put this as a bulleted list like that. It makes it a bit easier. I'm going to say uh, brief project. Description, I'm just going to uh, tab that in one. Actually, I'm going to adjust this list real quick to that because it looks nicer. Then we'll click, um, if you can't really use a shift tab on here to send them backwards. So what you need to do is click uh, decrease indent here. And it'll automatically go back to number two. Their numbering options aren't as complex or intricate as Word. So I wouldn't get too I wouldn't uh, spend too much time trying to format your list. I just get one that works if you need to use it, and then do your final formatting in Word. You'll find you'll probably want to do that with a lot of different with a finer formatting requirements. So don't focus about how pretty your document looks. Focus more on functionally organizing it the way you want and making sure it's accessible, readable, and usable. So list of variables now what i can do here in my header i could say uh table of contents and then i'm just gonna well i need to actually turn this into a header one real quick heading one highlight this and then i'm just gonna uh, click on headings and click on that and click apply so if someone scrolls down here and they could be on any random page let's say i have like a 30 page document and they want to quickly get here I can click heading, scroll back up, ta-da, they're here. Another important thing to note is that over here, this very useful thing, I love it so much. I loved it when they added it, was the outline. If I uh, click on any one of these headings, I'll automatically go to it. It's fantastic. And you can, um, 
I don't try to put in all headings. And if you like, if it picks up that you're using like a certain style of bold often. So if I like say text and then colon, I can say, uh, you know, more text. And I do this often enough, it'll start to try to pick that up and recognize it as being a uh, thing to include in the outline. And I'll try to do it. Uh, I don't too much put too much stock, uh, stock in that. So don't rely on it. Just rely on headings. And if you find that you're having too many headings, you can just you know remove them from the outline. But this is really useful for uh, panning around and going to different places in your document. It's fantastic. Now, other things you can do. Are, you can quickly insert pictures, um, insert image, you can upload from your computer, new by URL, if you have anything stored in your Google Drive. <laughs> this is funny, it says only select images that you have confirmed you have the license to use, like, I have a, a license, like, bro, maybe if I was doing something commercial, but whatever, that's not important, sorry, got a little distracted there. But you can insert tables. They're table options, like they work. They're not the greatest. Um, if you want to, for my project, we're going to be having to obviously put in some different variables and whatnot. So if I say, uh, like, int, actually, I'll just create one line of code to demonstrate something. Let's say system dot out dot print ln. Um, text and whatnot. Let's say I wanted to demonstrate that and wanted, wanted to make sure people understood that this is code. I'm going to click on the font and they actually have a few fonts that look very uh, code-like. I'm going to find one. Here we go. Source Code Pro. Bam. So it's a neat way of being able to uh, distinguish the differences. What you could do if you really wanted to uh, do it with their different style options since they don't have additional like a you can't create like a secondary normal text or something you could just use one of the headings and set it aside and just use that for all your coding to like separate that so it's nice and formatted you can adjust the formatting on the fly but it's always really valuable to take advantage of this of your things here so you can adjust them to the sizes you want and adjust them another important thing you can do you can uh instead of having to like if you're working on a document with multiple people and you have a comment you want to make on something without like messing up the uh the organization or flow of the document you click add a comment so it says right here you know add a comment i'm going to say i have a question about this i what is it click comment and there's a comment here, and if I click on it, it highlights it, and I can see who has it, and I can just click reply and say, it's a typical Java um, bit of code used to send text, or rather a string, a string to the console. Specifically to print it, but that you know works. And I click reply, and ta-da! And I can click this edit, delete, whatever. I can just, and I can uh, mark it as resolved, so it doesn't have to like pop up. But it'll be off to the side and not in my document. I didn't, uh, I didn't show this at first to my group because I figured it'd be a little hard to try to explain in text to them, and I didn't know how familiar any of them were were with uh, Google Docs, and it when I try to go, you know, too much over their heads and frustrate them. But since I'm making this video, I'll point it out to them. And I think this will really help us out when we're trying to have questions about things and work on our documents without without disorganizing them too much. So I'll click resolve and hide that and it just goes away. If I click open comments, it'll still pop up here and I can reopen it if I would like. And it'll show, uh, it'll show that I marked as resolved and reopened, but I'll click resolve again. 
click here. You can adjust notifications so you can um, get email notification settings about this. So you can only get notifications for comments that involve me, or I can say get all notifications for every comment. Which may end up sending you a lot of emails, depending on how many people you're working with and how much they love to use the comment system. <laughs> now, if I click share in here, I can add more people and it won't adjust the permissions of the other documents in the folders here which is very useful now another important thing to note is uh, i don't really have a uh, tool for citations i'm sure if i looked hard enough i could find an add-on for it but i'm not going to try to do that right now so if you're trying to use this to like make an apa format paper i recommend uh if you're just doing a normal apa format paper by yourself try to do it in word but like word because you can use their auto uh, citation features which are just fantastic and severely underused by most people i find but still really important now another thing to note is you can um i want to adjust like let's say i've taken this formatting right and i've messed with it or i copied and pasted something from a different like document or whatever and i want to adjust the formatting real quick or get rid of it and just go to format just click clear formatting and it'll just set it and remove all the formatting that's been put on it pretty valuable i can sit here and try to go through all of these but there is a lot of stuff to try to go through they have an explore option they added recently i haven't looked too much into it but you know might be worth looking into for the bold and the curious you can adjust the mode or um instead of editing your document you can make suggestions so let's say i go here and i just want to say I don't like the sound of this. I'm going to say, we should say, um, just get rid of that and say, right here and say, this is our text, right? If I click that and then bam, it's there and all the text will still appear there. And um, I can click accept suggestion or reject suggestion. This will be useful. You don't want to get rid of the original text. And I like it. I think it's pretty useful. I haven't used it too much, so I can't comment on how good it is or how uh, extensive it can be used. So we'll find out. I'll click reject the suggestion for now. But this is uh, this is everything. I think it works pretty well. Here's where you can download things in your various formats. I usually download as Microsoft Word or PDF documents. Works pretty well. Um, document details, that'll show you what you need to know. Um, view, you can add, a different, add different things to it. You can add equations, which is always nice and valuable. Charts, tables, yada, 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 yada. They have special characters you can add here. They have good old horizontal line. And then, this is it. It works pretty well. If anyone has any questions, you can comment on the video, but I would recommend trying to play around with it. Google Docs is a very valuable tool, in my opinion, for people trying to collaborate on documents and other projects when they don't like live in close proximity to each other it's very it's very very good and it's free and if i remember correctly you have unlimited storage um i'm gonna ignore that but you anyway you have unlimited storage for google documents in your google drive whereas you have like for free users, I think you get like 15 gigabytes of files you can upload. But if you create a Google document, it doesn't count against your 15 gigabytes, which is fantastic. If you're trying to look at documents that were shared with you, you can click down here to share it with me, yada, 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 yada. Click back up to my drive and I click on here. You don't need to see all of my documents, <laughs> but this is 
Google Drive and Google Docs in a nutshell. If you're trying to look at add-ons to add, click Get Add-ons. And ta-da! All kinds of add-ons. They have all kinds. Make sure you read the... Um, make sure you take a look and pay attention a bit to the uh, star ratings. And a lot of these will try to say free, but what they mean is you're free to try it. So make sure you pay attention. Anywho... I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was educational. And at Sally, I hope this uh, helped clear up some of the confusion you've been having with Google Docs and Google Drive. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.